Hi, so just a little disclaimer uh, to begin. I have a cigar throughout this video, so if you don't like smoking, apologies for that. But sometimes I find it a little bit therapeutic. It helps me to reflect on things. Just in case you're wondering, Royal Dutch. Don't know if I need to give them some sort of endorsement or if that's even... Well, this video isn't monetized, so I don't think it's a problem. Um... In light of this Gillette ad that's gained a lot of backlash, um, I want to, or I think rather it's very topical to talk about the subject of masculinity as an adjective, as a concept, and how I interpret it, how I feel about it as, as an idea. Just a brief little recap, um, my own thoughts on the Gillette ad. I don't think the message was necessarily bad, but I think the delivery was bad in the sense that it came across as very condescending and it did come across as smearing half the human race. Yes, there was some, you know, there was good guys doing some virtuous things like the man breaking up the little boys fighting and so on. Although one guy pointed out, uh, there's been many response videos for that. One guy pointed out something interesting. One of the segments showed um, an attractive woman walking past two guys and one of the guys goes to speak to her and his friend's like, not cool, not cool. Well, that opens up a whole new debate about, particularly in this Me Too era, how the hell are men supposed to make the first move? That's a convention, right? Men make the first move in heterosexual relationships. So how, if men cannot even talk to a beautiful woman, what, what hope is there for the future? Because we're going to have a situation where men don't even want to communicate because they'll they'll be frightened of being accused of harassment. So that little segment just, you know, opens up. Um, I mean, there's nothing in that that suggests that the guy was going to be sleazy or sexually assault or anything like that. Presumably he just wanted to go up, chat to her, ask for a number, ask her for a coffee. How dare he? And I think there's a real problem in that. I think it's something that the whole Me Too thing has opened up. What are the boundaries? Anyway, that might be for another video. For this video, I want to speak specifically, specifically about the concept of masculinity and what it means. Um, I don't think there's an exact science to this. I don't think there's an exact definition. Because what it means to one person may mean something else to different people. And just like femininity, um, it has cultural variations. But I think um, it's fair to say that the adjective is associated with certain traits. It's associated with physical toughness. It's associated with bravery. It's associated with responsibility. Those are all things that I think it's fair to say come into the notion of masculinity. If we look at social structures, the idea of the father figure, the hunter-gatherer, and this is nothing new, this is something that's been present in human society, in all human societies on some level, um, forever, forever, literally. Um, so here's my take on masculinity, and I think there's blurred lines between masculinity and the so-called patriarchy. I say so-called because I don't think it's really apt today. I do think there is a case to be made about the patriarchy in the past, where women didn't have the right to vote and men definitely had the power base. I don't think patriarchy exists today in Western liberal democracies. I just don't think it's it's such, there is such a concept today because women have all the legal rights that men have. Uh, they all have all the um opportunity options that men have so i just don't think the patriarchy is a thing in western liberal democracies you could certainly make a case in a society like saudi arabia um and other parts of the world but anyway that's just to stick to the subject at hand i think that the problem with the the feminist interpretation of masculinity is that they only look at it in a negative sense. I.e. when they think of masculinity, they, they only think of toxic masculinity, which is itself a problematic term. 
Um, I mean, we never talk about toxic feminism or toxic femininity, although feminists would certainly take issue with what they would call the stereotype of girls, you know, little girls playing with dolls and so on. And uh, there's definitely a feminist backlash against social interpretations of what is femininity. A concern that I have is identity politics and feminism and, dare I say it, transgender ideology as well. All these things, I think, are actually making traditional masculinity and traditional femininity almost dirty words. Almost like there's something inherently wrong with it. So this is my take. I I do see a problem with people being kind of pressured into um, a very rigid image of what should be a man or what should be a woman. Definitely that can be problematic. And you don't need to be a rocket scientist to see that. I mean, how often do we hear, oh, man up or, you know, be a real man? And likewise, be ladylike, be, be a real woman. When that is far too rigid, of course it's damaging. It can be very damaging to young people. It can um, put them under enormous pressure, particularly if they're in the LGBT community. Um, definitely it can be damaging. However, I think the backlash against it is going a bit too far the other way. So there's this idea that if a man is actually in touch with his masculinity, then there's this kind of patronizing notion, oh, but it's peer pressure. You can be yourself. Well, I am being myself. I'm that's my character. I, I'm in touch with my masculine side. So what feminists need to understand is masculinity can be good or bad. And the problem I have with third wave feminism's attitude to this is that they interpret it as all bad. And that's that's nonsense. It's not all bad. Masculinity can be a very good thing. I mean, who's going to argue about virtues like responsibility, courage? Those are good things. And of course, that's not to say that women can't be brave as well, but I think it's fair to say those are some of the attributes that are associated with masculinity. Um, in dating, the fact of the matter is men and women are different, right? So I suspect most heterosexual men, and I can't speak for everyone, but I would suggest most heterosexual men want a woman who is relatively feminine. And by relatively feminine, I'm not talking about ultra-sensitive, girly girl, I broke a nail sort of, but just a woman that it acts like a woman that, you know, I mean, put it this way, the average man and this is not to generalise because everyone has their own tastes, but I think the average straight man is not going to go for a woman who drinks heavily, um, swears like a sailor, and just generally personifies attributes of negative masculinity. Not even positive masculinity, but negative masculinity. I mean, we've seen in the UK since the 1980s the so-called ladette culture, which I find absolutely repulsive. Um, Feminists think, oh, well, it's uh, it's equality. It, it is, in a sense. But the point is, those young women, and sometimes not so young, who are acting like that, they're not free, independent women. They're just making themselves look foolish because they're actually adopting the negative characteristics, characteristics of masculinity, i.e. the worst sort of laddish, loutish behaviour. And it's embarrassing. I may mean, have to be honest, I... Um, even if she was physically attractive, a girl who swore like a sailor, I'd find it off-putting. If that makes me old-fashioned and archaic, so be it. There are just certain things that, you know, the saying, opposites attract. Even in gay relationships, you have a more masculine side and a more feminine side. I have a gay friend, and he's um, he's always been quite effeminate. And I know that the sort of man he's looking for, the sort of man he's looking for, he wants to be more manly so even in gay relationships you have that dynamic i mean it's very rare that you would see two gay men with them both effeminate 
the chances are would be one would be more masculine, one would be more feminine. The same in lesbian relationships. So it's something that I think is very normal. And I think too often we stigmatize it as a bad thing. I mean, I'm not going to lie. In a relationship, I would see my wife, my girlfriend, is absolutely equal but different. And I would see myself as, quote unquote, the protector, the hunter gatherer. That doesn't mean that I'm the one that does everything and I have all the responsibility. But, and of course, we'd make mutual decisions about things and so on. But there are just certain things that. I think are shunned and my question would be why I mean what about romance if we totally shun masculinity and femininity then where, where's the romance where is that dynamic to have the conditions for romance i.e it's a cold night a man wants to give his wife or girlfriend a jacket to keep her warm that's romantic it's a chivalrous gesture now if we totally reject the masculine and feminine concepts then that goes out the window because though it's uh, he's assuming her gender role, but no, it's just him being romantic and chivalrous, and I think most women would appreciate it. most, not all. So, for me, of course, there's a danger of these conditions, these um, not conditions, these these roles being too rigidly enforced. I don't like that. You know, I wouldn't like a situation where men are always expected to be physically tough or um, women are always expected to act in a certain way. I think that's nonsense. And society has rightly moved on from those sort of, let's say, Edwardian stereotypes. You know, there's, that's helped both genders, actually. Because we have to remember, those of us men who are critical of fair wave feminism, we have to remember that traditional, let's say, the patriarchy, didn't exactly make life always easy for men either. Because, I mean, take for example, um, I don't know, let me make a Titanic analogy, women and children first. Well, we, you could have long debates about situations like that. Um, it was There was different orders on the Titanic. Some said women and children first, some said women and children only. Now, the standards of the time, most men, you know, they... They wanted to show that they were real men, quote unquote, letting women and children go first. And I think today it would be the same scenario. I think that hasn't actually changed. I think men still fundamentally feel a protective instinct. There was a mass shooting in America a while back. Well, that, that's hardly news, but I forget which one it was. But there was reports circulating that men had shielded their girlfriends and some of them had died. So most men are decent human beings and most men have a fundamental protective instinct particularly with women and children why because the average woman and certainly children are physically not as powerful it's just uh, it's just a fact of life so for me what does masculinity mean it doesn't mean this sort of hyper masculine in your face aggressive um putting on a big front image it's about certain basic things in a relationship i want to be the man by which i mean i'm the protector and yeah we would make joint decisions and that would be the scenario but put it this way i couldn't i couldn't date a girl who was in like a boxer or a soldier or something uh, i could be friends with them but i couldn't date them because in a relationship scenario, it just wouldn't. I'm quite traditional and I need a woman who's quite traditional. So, you know, I, by the way, I totally support women's right to do those things. I just couldn't date a woman for doing that because it would not be the yin yang. It just wouldn't. And I don't see why people should be so uptight about it and so think it's such an awful thing that people want opposites, you know? Um, so that's how I feel about it. So when when we hear about toxic masculinity, is there such a thing? I think there probably is. And let me explain what I would consider that to be. I do think that within male society, if I could put it that way, I mean, the way men interact with other men, 
I do think there are some guys out there who are, um, they do men no favours. I'm not just talking about the way they treat women, but the way they treat other men. I read, for example, a report today. Um, there was a, a riot between, I believe it was Liverpool or Everton, excuse me, Everton and Millwall, and a guy got slashed across the face. That's, if there's such a thing as toxic masculinity, I suppose you could say it's situations like that, just mindless thuggish violence for absolutely no reason. Why? Because someone's wearing a different football kit? I would say the world of sports, um, you get it in boxing and you get it in football, mindless yobbery, to use a British colloquialism, i.e. just mindless bad behaviour, treating people with that sort of extreme disrespect, um, violence, you know, wanton violence, just... That is something that is more the domain of men. It's not, of course, you get violent women as well, but I would argue those women are trying to copy the worst aspects of men. These so-called liberated ladettes who are nothing of the sort, they're just idiots. Um, so I do think that the, the way men treat other men, let's just focus on that for a second. I mean, when you get, for example, hazing in the military, I would say that's probably a negative example of masculinity because it's this notion that bullying makes people strong. It doesn't. I never consider bullying to be a point of strength. And uh, when it's focused on an individual, I mean, another example, when you get a group of young men, uh, let's say eight of them are out in a night out and seven of them give one a hard time because he's a virgin. That's an example of sort of peer bullying and it, it can be incredibly damaging it can lead to severe loneliness depression mental anguish i've been through it i know what that feels like so the way men males treat other guys sometimes is appalling it really is now there are men out there there are public figures i deeply dislike and i'm not going to pretend anything else but there are certain standards there are certain there, there are certain things that we just should realize as adults, as reasonable human beings, that that's not a way to treat someone else. And I do think that within laddish culture, there are certain things that definitely are not something to be proud of. And we can't blame feminists for that. We can't blame, you know, we have to, in that sense, look at ourselves. So that ad, the notorious Gillette ad, was alluding to some of that stuff. Um, but like I said, it's the way they went about it, I think was misguided. You do, you never, you never pitch something by, you know, trying to shame half the human race. You're never going to get people on board by making them feel guilty or, you know, trying to shame them into something. That's just nonsense. But I think there's a difference between, and I hope I've elaborated it in this video, there's a difference between positive masculinity courage, responsibility, um, being protective of people who are weaker than ourselves, those are all positive things. Being an asshole, bullying, um, being loud and obnoxious, um, this sort of frat boy sort of behavior, that's not, that's not something that should be seen as okay. And too often, frankly, there are too many men who, we hear, for example, about, um, I'll give an example. Neil Lennon, the Scottish football manager, I don't follow football, but apparently he got assaulted um, recently at a match. A coin was thrown at him. Now, the comments I was seeing on YouTube were pissing me off because people were downplaying it and saying that, oh, he's a big so-and-so. Now, I don't know this guy. I don't know the internal politics of football, but, you know, throwing a coin isn't harmless. It could blind someone. It's that sort of mindless yobbery and thuggery that, is frankly the domain mostly of men and we need to call it out and call it for what it is it shouldn't be trivialized it shouldn't be seen as okay to assault someone so when i see men making light of assault that's problematic you know civilized human beings don't go to a sporting event and assault someone they don't even personally know that is not civilized behavior. That is not reasonable behavior. And it certainly isn't being a man. It's just being a mindless lout. So there are certain characteristics 
of masculinity, let's call it toxic masculinity, for want of a better term, that do need to be challenged. The only problem I have with the notion of toxic masculinity in its current sense is that it tends to be aimed at masculinity as a whole. So some people think that any expression of male power must be bad. No, male power can be a good thing. And that's the point that I would make about masculinity. Male power can be a good thing. I mean, let's face it, if there's a dire situation, uh, do you want a man who's effeminate and passive or do you want a man that's going to take control of the situation and show courage? I think the answer is obvious. And I guess it's one reason why I've always been attracted to the sport of boxing, the courage that is involved in that, not just mental, but physical. That's why, I, I, I mean, to me, the ideal man, if, if we can say such a thing, is guys like Vladimir Klitschko, Manny Pacquiao, um, certain boxers, not all boxers, but certain boxers who exhibit the best qualities of boxers, but they're also gentlemen. They're also, they conduct themselves in the real world in an upstanding way. There are, frankly, a lot of boxers out there who don't do the sport credit, but guys like Klitschko, Pacquiao, and there are others, um, you know, they, I have enormous respect for them because that to me is the good role model of masculinity. There's no such thing as a perfect person. But if you can exhibit the sort of power of someone like Vladimir Klitschko and yet you're gentle with women and you, you know, that that's admirable, I think, and is very important. Because unfortunately, there are men out there who use their physical strength to bully others. That's why I do have nothing but utter contempt for men who use their fists on women. Um, I've never understood it. And no, I don't condone violent women either. But anyone that thinks it's a level playing field is deluded. I mean, I've never understood men who brutalize women. So that's it. I know the video is a little bit lengthy, but it's not about, you know, being a real man. It's about being comfortable in ourselves. And incidentally, if you are an effeminate man or, you know, that's fine. Best wishes. But what I would say to feminists and to men who don't want to fit in that role, don't try to shame other men. I mean, I would consider myself relatively masculine, but I'm certainly not hyper masculine. I say that I'm masculine in the sense that I I feel comfortable being a man's man. That doesn't mean that I'm absolutely hardwired to like certain things. I mean, I appreciate certain things that would be considered perhaps more effeminate. I like romantic comedies, for example. But overall, I would say my, my DNA definitely shifts towards alpha male and I'm fine with that I'm happy with that and in a relationship you know by god if it ever came to a situation of danger I would fight like a tiger I absolutely would and I'm not the strongest person in the world but that is what being a man is about thanks for watching let me know your thoughts